Good morning, friends. Welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Guess what just pulled up here at production? Yes, it is the Proven Winners truck from our friends at Pleasant View Gardens uh, in Loudoun, New Hampshire, and they have our first Proven Winner annuals for the 2024 season. Very, very exciting. Now, on this order, we have um, two different sets of plants essentially we have the first round for the garden center and we have the first round for the online so very excited I, we're going to get this unloaded and then i'm going to kind of walk you through uh, and give you a little bit of highlights of the annuals that are on this order um, but we are very very excited brenna is hanging out in johnny uh, so uh, she is here, the whole gang's here. We have a fun day ahead because this is, uh, we've got a lot of things going on as normal here at Creekside Nursery, right? We have the Pleasant View delivery of our Proven Winter Annuals. We have another delivery of um, a massive culvert pipe that we're going to be installing at the creek. We'll show you that. The greenhouse is essentially completely done. Jerry just has one or two little tweaks to do. So we're gonna show you that and give you an update on all the bells and whistles and everything that is um, what it does, right? Because we have proven winter annuals arriving every two weeks for the next month or so. Um, so tomorrow we will begin potting these sweet babies up, but super, super excited about this. Um, so yeah, let's just go see what they look like. There will. There's the crew. Yay! There's the plants. <laughs> it's also very exciting to see these little babies arrive. Just like Alyssa got so excited to see them. It's like seeing old friends again. Uh, because we know exactly what these sweet little babies are gonna turn into, and it is just super exciting. Very exciting. Well, the are <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends, so we're, uh, the pipe has arrived, so we left the Pleasant View Nursery delivery and we are headed down <laughs> to the pipe. Very bright sun. Uh, Jerry is driving, Andrew's in the back, and I got Brenna at my feet. So if you hear a yappity yappity, it's just she's very excited. Uh, so we're gonna have him, yeah. have him follow us, hopefully. All right, so we've got uh, a big old trailer for that it is a 10 foot section of pipe um what we're going to do all right so we've got that 10 foot section of pipe which is going to go down here um if you remember that was um close to two weeks ago now um where we had the the huge rain that came through and we had extensive flooding here at the nursery we're going to extend this part of the culvert that's already there. So it is basically essentially the exact same pipe that you just saw on the back of the trailer that is already in here. People have asked or were talking about when we did that video about the damage from the flooding, about, you know, um, why don't you do this or why don't you do this to try to stop the water? Why don't you um, dig out the creek to make it deeper and wider? Why don't you um, try to, you know, stop the water from coming? When you have that massive amount of water, there is no stopping the water. Um, you don't stop water unless it's some like massive, huge, like dam or whatever, right? We're not gonna do that. What we try to do is simply direct the water where we want it to go. Um, 90% of the time, we're very successful with that. But then you have those rare occurrences every four years, every 10 years, whatever, where you have that kind of flooding that we had. And at that point, um, you just manage it. Like you don't manage water. If you've been around massive amounts of water that are flowing, you don't stop it. It is, <laughs> you're just trying to tell it where to go. So we're just trying to help tell it where to go a bit 
and we um, need to make this drive bigger because we get constant deliveries, 18 wheelers, um, massive sleeper cabs, I mean, massive trucks. And as long as the driver is good and knows how to drive, um, which we have some amazing drivers that have absolutely no problem coming in and out of here. But then you also get inexperienced drivers and it is very stressful and very um, just very tense when they come across the creek and when they are leaving because they don't know how to keep their wheels where they're supposed to go. I've always said at some point somebody's going to end up in this creek. We're going to try to avoid that together uh, today. So what the plan is, is we are going to, put, not today, just that the pipe's coming today. We're going to install that 10 foot pipe, which, you know, obviously we'll have to connect in. So we'll, uh, and so the pipe will go from here and it will go right past this massive poplar tree that we have. Now, down here, you will see on the creek that the roots are, I mean, they are just on the edge of the creek. So if you see any of these wood, these pieces of wood, that is all the roots from this tree. I'm not getting rid of this tree. Love this tree. We're not gonna disturb those roots whatsoever. What we are gonna do is we'll take our machinery and we're going to dig out right in here because this is just sand. This is like a sandbar. Um, we've got plenty of room to come in here and um, make more room this way. So the pipe will then come in, right? And we'll could start somewhere right here around where that tree is and the creek will flow through that. We will then come just very much like we just did um, the other day, yesterday, uh, with the culvert, and we will fill in, backfill everything, soil, dirt, massive rocks, and then gravel, so that the road actually is extended by X number of feet. Again, not taking out the poplar tree, but we're just gonna make it so that the road comes here when the trucks come through back and forth, they have plenty of room. Now y'all, this is, I, I would have to measure this. This is at least a good, this is the width of, of a, a normal high, like road, right? So this is a 30, 30 feet, I don't know what it is, but there's already lots of room. We're just trying to avoid problems. When we get the massive flooding, like we just experienced, because it's not a matter of will we, it's a matter of when we, because it, it, it's just what happens around here every couple of years, um, that water still absolutely will probably overflow again. And that is fine because that's how it is meant to overflow and go the way that it did. And then it returns back to the creek. So that is the, uh, the plan, the goal, make this bigger. And then as far as what will happen and what will look like on this side. Um, so of course the road will be, you know, all of this that had washed out, all of this will be covered and that road is going to shoot up and you can see the tea olives right here. We're gonna leave the tea olives. So we're gonna maneuver it so that it goes this way. The tea olives are going to stay because that will be a natural uh, barrier for the truck drivers, like a visual point for the truck drivers to go, okay, well, I can't run over this tree, um, hopefully. And then, so they'll come up and then we're actually going to go ahead uh, and remove, probably there is uh, a native azalea. This is a Gibraltar. We're gonna go ahead and move that, transplant that somewhere else down. And then I told Jerry, I want to go ahead and take this part of the flower bed that has all of our beautiful annuals. And I wanna push this back by a couple of feet. So that way, cause I, bless their hearts, right? And this is not just truck drivers. It could be, <laughs> it could be regular cars too. They just have a hard time. Um, but they come in and they run all up on these rocks. And so I, want, I, I don't want my annuals to get run over. So we're gonna push that back and then have nice big rocks that kind of line it again, trying to be visual and saying, hey, don't come through here. And so we're just gonna push that back. The gravel will be all the way up here and then join the road up there. So that is the plan. It looks like Jackson is the driver today of the Bobcat. We've got, like I said, Miss B is in Johnny. 
So I have a leash that is hooked onto the interior of Johnny. She is then attached to the leash. So she just knows that when she's on that leash, she just kind of hangs out right there. Um, Cause with drivers and new people, we just, just don't need that. So Jackson has got the, uh, the pipe. It's all our same people, Brenna. Uh, the pipe, that would be what Andrew has is like the ring to connect those two pipes. And then they're just gonna go and deposit it all down there by the creek. So there we go. Now, what we're gonna do is go ahead and dump this off where it is that they want it. Go back up to the production and make sure that all our sweet babies arrived. And yeah, then we'll move on to the next project. All right, my friends. So we got all of the plants from Proven Winners and our friends at Pleasant View Gardens. Uh, they are all laid out. They are organized and we know exactly who is what and what is where and all the things. It is quite the organizational feat to do that. What we're gonna do is just, I'm gonna kind of just go over. Um, I am not gonna have plant pictures, y'all. I will show you the tag. If you are interested in a plant, you can go to gardeningwithcreekside.com because all of these plants are available online. So you can, if you wanna do your pre-order, go ahead, gardeningwithcreekside.com. It will show you all the pictures, give you all the information, but these are all annuals. Annuals mean that they last for one season. There will be some caveats though, because depending on your grow zone, right? Um, plants have that plant hardiness level. So for example, we have in here um, the pink Chablis Lamian. And pink Chablis, we sell this as a annual. However, because if you look, this is why we adore Proven Winners. As a grower, as a retailer, this is why I love this company. Every plant comes with a great tag. So you have a picture on the front of the tag. It, this says sun to shade. That means it can grow in the sun or the shade, any kind of um, sun conditions. The eight to 12 inches means how tall it is going to be. Flip it over and you will see on the back, it tells you like the habit, the blooms, the height, the spacing, the zones. Now, that's what I'm talking about on the zones. It says annual except in zones 4A to 8B. So annual except in zones. That means if you're in a zone 4A to an 8B, this will be a perennial for you. Um, so while this is sold as an annual, it will be technically a perennial for me in my garden. Um, the exact same thing is true for my lemon coral sedum. We love lemon coral sedum. Again, sell it as an annual, but for me, it is a perennial. So here we go with the tag. This is gonna be one that's mostly done for the foliage. It will bloom like the second year, um, but they're very insignificant. It, it really is for the foliage. Here on the back, right, where it says the zones, annual except in zones 7A to 11B. So if you're in those warm zones, it will be basically an evergreen for you. So much fun. Uh, of course, we have the annual of the year right here. This is the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry. It is the annual of the year, but just to give you an idea of what these plants look like when they come to us, this is a tray. Um, all the trays that we got today are trays of 82. That means there's 82 plants in this tray. Um, if you're familiar with Vista Jazzberry, let's see if I can pull one out. This is what we call a plug because you can see it is a little plug of a plant. Um, this one little plug will go into a grande container and that is how we will sell it. If we did a hanging basket, we would probably put three of these in one hanging basket. So just know here is your sweet little itty bitty uh, Vista Jazzberry that will turn into a big, beautiful beast very, very soon throughout the season. So that kind of gives you an idea of like the size of these plants. Now you can as a, and this is for wholesale, right? So people will ask, you know, well, I want to order from Pleasant View Gardens. I'm a home gardener and I do tons of annuals every year. 
when you get your, um, there's only two houses that the Proven Winter Annuals come from. It is initially, it is either Pleasant View Gardens in Loud, New Hampshire, or it is four star greenhouses in Michigan, right outside of Detroit. Those are the home of all the proven winter annuals. Now from there, then retail nurseries, growers, those kinds of people buy them. That is what we do. We buy directly from them, then we grow them out. They are wholesale only. So as a home gardener, you could not order like a tray of this to Jazzberry, right? So you would have to go to your retail garden center and order through it that way. Just kind of give you an idea because people will it, inevitably people always ask like how that works so that is very interesting so the two homes of your proven winter annuals pleasant view gardens four star greenhouses all your proven perennials will come from our friends at walters gardens and then all of the shrubs proven winters shrubs come from spring meadow nursery so there are four major and these places are huge right four major greenhouses that all proven winter plants will come from. Um, so just a little FYI there. What we did is you will notice that all of the trays are laid out and in front of them is the tag. Now, we also went ahead and separated them by type of plant, right? So these are all the osteospernums right here. All the petunias are all right in here. So if we have different plants, then we went ahead and separated them by what they are. So it just makes it easier. Like for example, we have those three trays of the pink Chablis Lamian. That way, when we pot them up, we will pot all three trays right there together. Therefore, when they go in the greenhouse, all the plants are um, all together and you're not separating like a group of pink Chablis over here and a, and a group over here. We like to be nice and organized and neat. This order, this section right here is all going to be for the retail greenhouse. The initial order. Uh, remember, this is just the first of I don't know how many orders they come every two weeks <laughs> that's how we that's how we have set it up um, that they're coming every two weeks now for my sweet people online this is the initial order for our e-commerce plants so that is why we have them nice and separated you will notice that there is a huge gap between these two sets of plants these retail plants will go ahead and go into the retail greenhouse down at the garden center because we keep separate inventory the garden center has its own inventory and online has its own inventory. Same, we have a lot of overlap, but they're completely different inventories. So you can see here, we did the exact same thing. All of these are petunias. And in fact, this whole section right here, these are all Vista petunias. Then in the back, this is what we just call, <laughs> when I say regular petunias, you know that the super petunias are not regular, but say like we have the Bordeaux, we have the brand new, look y'all, super, super excited. The uh, super petunia Hoopla Vivid Orchid. Great plant, super excited. I'm super excited about this super petunia. So there you go. Um, we've got those and Saffron Finch is right beside of it. These are the two new petunias for this year. So those two are right there. Again, this is just the initial order. And then we come through, um, yeah. So then we go into mini vistas are back here. We've got again, like the osteos. We have the Terenia. Look at this. I know y'all gonna be excited about this. The brand new Superbina Pink Cashmere. So now, the reason that we bring plants in at different times, like say for like the Superbina Pink Cashmere, we have two trays here. Because remember, we keep telling you that we are going to ship you your plants based on your growing zone. So really, these this first order of plants is going to go to my, my, my fellow people in hot climates because you're going to be ready your climate is going to be ready say in texas long before my friends who are in maine or nebraska right so we have to bring plants in at different times based on um, where we're going to ship them out we can't we could but it doesn't make any kind of sense to do one order for all 
online because they're going to be sent out at different times and then you're trying to maintain them. We could talk about a six week difference between when we ship our very first order to my hottest areas, maybe say Southern California or Texas or Southern Florida, right? between the very first shipment of plants to the first shipment of plants in those cold zones. So there's a huge period there um, where certain parts of the country are ready for their annuals and certain parts of the country are not ready. So that is our job. So if you're in a zone three, you're gonna get your plants a whole lot later than my folks in the zone 11, right? Makes sense. Um, so we just have all sorts, y'all. It is so much fun. I would have to go back and look. I know that we have a total of 133 trays. So my mathematicians out there, whatever, 133 times 82, because these are all 82 count trays, that's the number of plants we have. So there you go. Tomorrow is going to be the day where we go ahead and pot up. So tomorrow is Friday. We will go ahead and try to get all of these potted tomorrow. We'll have an all hands on deck and we'll just be working our little hearts out. These go really fast though, because remember each tray holds 10 plants. Um, so you can really like fly through these plants much, much faster than doing the bare roots. So I think we should be able to do it tomorrow. Of course, we'll take you along for the ride on that. All right, now let's go check on the new greenhouse because it is, should be all up and running and ready for plants. All right, my friends, so. Here we are in the greenhouse. Jerry's mic'd up. Yeah, ready to go here. We just walked in. Everything is ready to start growing all your annuals and perennials. So we just walked, well, we were in here, but the, um, the exhaust fans just kicked on. So that's the three up here at the tippy tippy top. You will see those fans, they are running. And so what their job is, is um, Jerry has a temperature set whatever that may be. Um, when it gets to be warmer than that, they will kick on and then I'm gonna turn for you because on the front side of the greenhouse, we have the three shutters and you will see that they are open. So those exhaust fans, they kick on and they suck out the hot air. Once the greenhouse cools off, then they go ahead and they'll turn off and then those shutters will turn off. Yeah, it's good to see. It is good to see. All right, what other bells and whistles can you show us? Well, um, we can turn on fans and lights. Yeah. Let's do some fans and lights. So we also have, uh, going down the center of the aisles, you will see we have our LED lights. And then these are the circulation fans. So there we go. Yeah, those are, those are the uh, HA they just kicked on. fans. So the circulation fans, you'll notice that they are, so there's one there, there's one there. They're facing in opposite directions. And that literally is circulating the air in the greenhouse so that you don't get hot spots, you don't get warm areas, that kind of thing. So explain what that little black cord is above your head. Oh, the thermistor? Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of reading temperature at that level. And we dropped the one a little bit down from there. This is about as far as we can go with a, with the type of thermostat wire that they gave us. Right. So we it, ideally it would be great to have one, you know, way on the other side of the greenhouse, say like behind us because it would accurately read all the different areas. <laughs> but the wire is only so long, but like they only give you yeah, such a long wire. It seems to work. I mean, the uh, It does. And the other greenhouses, they were even shorter. And we didn't have a problem with it at right. all. So come show us all the control panel. Uh, oh, and maybe we can roll up the sides. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I just finished blowing all the leaves out. Oh. And then the wind blows. But well, we can play around with it. Or just one. Can you roll up one side? We can maybe do this one. Yeah. Okay. Or, so explain what this is. So we've gone through this one other time. Uh, this is the climate boss that controls like all of the thermostat, this, the doors, the fans that just kicked on a few minutes ago, and it will control, each one of these controls two sides. So it's two, four, six, six sides. It's all on closed. Now these probably would have opened before the fans kicked on, but I have them off. Right, because you just blew all the leaves out. I, we don't want leaves back in here. Yeah, it's really windy today. So yeah, I think I can open 
that one over there. You know, if I put it on auto, one of them is going to open, probably. Yeah, it's got it the temperature, see? This is heat one. This is the temperature we're trying to maintain, I guess. So that was why it was like at 63 degrees. Mm -hmm. So that's why the fans kicked on. Gotcha. Well, anyway, let's see what happens here. I hear somebody that's rolling. Shrub lot side. Okay, so, and it doesn't have to go up all the way. Yeah. But you can see how it's starting to, and it's, see, it's not fast, right? It's a very slow, gradual opening. Brenna's interested in that. Um, so, yeah, it opens up all the way. There you go. And it will go up and it, a huge amount. So, um, but we don't want the leaves to come in. So we're going to stop it. <laughs> and then, see, and then now it goes back down. Nice and quiet. Very smooth, very slow. Don't have to worry about Brenna getting trapped in there. All is well. See, the fans kicked, this is what I was talking about one other time, the fans kicked off, but because it's at a certain temperature, you can see that the shutters are still open. Right. So it's still letting it cool off passively without using electricity to suck everything out. Gotcha. And it would have done it with these doors. Um, but they're all off. And then water, so irrigation wise, because people have been asking about irrigation, you'll see that we have three, um, there's one, two, and then three back there where we can open, um, hook hoses up to them. So we will have hoses that are kept right here on the edge and go down. So for right now, we will hand water, Brenna sees Andrew. Um, we will hand water and at some point we may install Sprinkler. automated irrigation sprinklers. We may, yeah. Yeah, so that's and it's to more for like when it really gets hot. Yeah, right now we don't water very much. No, we don't. <laughs> when we do, but we don't, and it can be easily done with a hand by hand going yes. down through here. Yep. All right, my friends, so it has been a very productive day today, but yet it has also been kind of the um, a nice kind of a slower pace day, less physically <laughs> straining. Well, maybe less physically. There was a lot going on. Well, there this I know, morning. but I'm yes, there was a lot going on this morning. But we're not out literally mucking in the mud and digging ditches. Not like yesterday. Not like no. yesterday. So today's goal was to take delivery of the plants and the pipe. Yep. To finish up here in the greenhouse, which he's done. Get it all nice and neat and tidy, so we could literally put plants in here tomorrow if we wanted to. Okay. And um, so it's been a little bit mentally challenging earlier. A little bit, our alarm's going off. Uh, it was a little bit mentally challenging this morning, just trying to keep track of all the deliveries, making sure everybody was where they're supposed to be. Um, but that's all done. And it's Thursday night, Thursday. So today's date night. So we get to have date night. Yep. And uh, yeah, so it's gonna be a great day. Nice to get these things marked off the list. Very good. All right. We'll see you tomorrow when we're potting up uh, a gazillion proven winter annuals. Bye, y'all.